Good day. Today we are going to discuss the quarter 2 week number 5 and 6 lessons in health. This about the baby now, the newborn screening, breastfeeding and immunization. Let's begin. A newborn is a child from the time of complete delivery to 30 days old. Remember the days again. 30 days. For a newborn child, a newborn screening is needed. This is a simple procedure to find out if the baby has a congenital metabolic disorder. It is ideally done on the 48th, 72nd hour of life. However, it may also be done after 24 hours from birth. A few drops of blood are taken from the baby's heel, blotted on a special absorbent filter card and then sent to Newborn Screening Center NSC. This might be painful for a very young baby, but it is necessary. Results can be claimed from the health facility where NBS was availed. Normal NBS results are available by 7 to 14 working days from the time samples are received at the NSC. In a newborn screening, APGAR is also needed. Stands for, appearance, pulse, grimace, activity and respiration. A tool used for assessing newborn babies. A negative screen means that the NBS result is normal. A positive screen means that the newborn must be brought back to a slash or health practitioner for further testing. Always remember the positive and negative screens. The APGAR, appearance, pulse, grimace, activity and respiration, the next slide will explain further the APGAR. Here is the example of newborn screening APGAR. For appearance we have blue, pale for zero, pink body and blue extremities like hands and feet for one point or overall pink for two points. For pulse we have absent or none for zero, low 100 beats per minute for one point and over 100 beats per minute for two points. The grimace or the reflex irritability we have floppy, minimal response to stimulation and prompt response to stimulation. Now for the activity of muscle tone we have absent for zero, flexed arms and legs for one point and active for two points. The respiration now are absent for zero, slow and irregular for one point and for two points we have vigorous respiration. Now breastfeeding is the traditional and ideal form of infant feeding, meeting an infant's nutritional needs for his first four to six months of life. Breastfeeding makes the baby healthier for as long as the mother is also healthy. Our government and WHO or the World Health Organization promotes breastfeeding because it has A of advantages for mother and most of all the health of the baby. Now let's talk about the advantages of breastfeeding. When a mother gives birth, there is a hormone in the mother that will stimulate her breast to produce milk. Human milk is clean. It lowers the risk of intestinal illness and general infection. Mother's milk provides a host of protective factors both cellular and hormonal. Breast milk contains antibodies that help the immune system of the infant strong. It is non-allergenic and easily digested. The mother's milk in the breast is continuously replenished so it is necessary to breastfeed the baby because that is the purpose or function of the breast. If a mother will not breastfeed a baby because she needs to stay away, a breast pump may be used to collect the milk and store it in a cold storage but not for long. Studies shows as well that those mother who refuse to breastfeed her newly born child and she is capable of breastfeeding, have a bigger chance of having breast cancer. So breastfeeding is healthy for both mother and child. Now let us identify different kind of immunization needed by the child. What is immunization? It is a vaccine to prevent infection by disease. The following are the essential vaccine for infant. We have BCG, anti-TB, to be given in one month old to seven years old. OPV, anti-polio vaccine, to be given between half month to 32 months only. And MMR, measles, mumps, rubella, for nine months to one year old. 
Most of this immunization are given for free in the public hospitals and local or nearby health centers. It is very important to have the baby complete immunizations truly nowadays that we have a lot of different illnesses and only the protection of immunization will prevent the baby from having. We have DPT, anti-diphtheria, pertussis and tetanus to be given between half month to 32 months only. DPT, anti-diphtheria, pertussis and tetanus to be given between half month to 32 months as well. HEPA B vaccine to be given between half month to 32 months as well. We come now to the last part of quarter two in health. As you remembered, it all started in courting, then dating, then engagement to marriage to prenatal, the pregnancy and labor to postnatal, the immunization and now being responsible parent and family planning. Let us start. To satisfy the need of for attaining adult status and social identity, a man and a woman decides to be a parent. Parenthood is the state of being a parent. This is when you and your partner have a child. Having a child gives parent a feeling of achievement and competence, power, social comparison, and economic utility. As you become a parent, your responsibility changes. You will have a lot sacrifices to consider as becoming a parent to a child. As mentioned, being a parent will add a lot of responsibility, not just for a child but also for the family. Responsible parenthood is the will and ability to respond to the needs and aspirations of the whole family. Parenting is a great responsibility and a demanding job that many parents are not truly prepared when they enter into it. Regardless of couples' lifestyles, the preparation to become a parent involves proper planning. Parents are expected to perform these duties and responsibilities. Together with teachers in school, parents which is the first actual teacher of child should provide the necessary education for a child for at least the basic of primary education. Whether it is in private or public school, parents are expected to provide the needs of a child in education. Parents must help their children develop their potentials. Parents must have time to teach their children aside from sending them to school. Another duties and responsibility of parents are spiritual formation, training children to become responsible and inculcating discipline. Everyone has the right to choose their own beliefs and religion, but a child doesn't have an idea of who is God and it's the parent's responsibility to introduce God to their children. In disciplining, it should start early by clearly defining set of rules. Must not tolerate mistakes. Teach children to apologize. In training children to become responsible is simply giving tasks to children what to do and giving more tasks as they grow. It will definitely teach them to become responsible when they grow. Provision of care, guidance and love. Taking good care during sickness. Activities of children must be guided and supervised by parents. Loving and caring for children is a full-time responsibility of parents. Providing experience to develop social competence. Parents must provide children opportunity to develop self-esteem, independence, self-confidence, and interpersonal skills. Training children to be a good member of society. 
develop the characters of their children to become more mindful on their responsibilities, rights, and roles in the society. Picking up trash and putting them in proper trash bin. Having a worthwhile activities like fun run, Zumba, and sports and practice sportsmanship. Joining community cleanup drive. Being responsible parent, you need to consider the family size or the number of persons in the family. Number one is the nutritional status of the family. Is the family, or the parent can provide the basic needs such as food based on the family income. Another effects of family size on health is the morbidity. This is when one member of the family got sick, can you handle the expenses? Is the house has a room for recovery or quarantine for those who got contagious disease? For risk behavior, it means that risk is high for a very large family to have drug addiction especially if one member of the family is into it. Can the parents look or handle this case if they have a lot of children? For the utilization of health services, though some government offers free hospitalization, but medicines are not free. Nowadays, we have lack or few of doctors and nurses or health care workers for every patient in the country and not only that, the facilities as well. If there is no family planning, there will be a rapid growth of population, and most people in the Philippines, especially those who have a big family size are in marginalized sectors. Then it will definitely result to malnutrition. This is a growing population with disparities in distribution can add strain to the environment to feed people. Aging population is a different matter. This is for the country who has population growth of older people. Like in Japan, most Japanese people are so independent and career-oriented that they tend to have one child or to no child because they grow old and can't bear a child any longer. That is the reason why they have more older age population than younger ones. Because of so much competition in the Philippines for a job and so many job seeker, salary is so small that it is so hard to provide for a growing family. That is why parents try to seek greener pasture in other country and they tend to get the whole family for a better living and opportunities as well. Now to control pregnancy or to avoid rapid population growth, family planning is the solution. We have several methods in family planning. We have natural which is a, a method of birth control that involves abstention from sexual intercourse during the period of ovulation which is determined through observation and measurement of bodily signs. Another method is the artificial barrier. This is any unnatural technique used to prevent conception. The tools used are condoms, foams, intrauterine device or IUD. For the chemical method, used of pills for impregnation.